Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. Uh, we're looking at Psalm 73, and I, I gotta ask you, do you ever wonder why some evil people succeed? Do you, ever, do you ever look at the world and go, why do wicked people prosper? Even sometimes you think, what's the point of following Jesus when it seems like so many people are getting away with it and there's so much injustice in the world and, and really, why am I making all these sacrifices and seeming to suffer for it? Well, if you've ever had any of those kind of thoughts, then you're in good company because so did the psalmist who writes Psalm 73 today. Listen to uh, this psalm. I'm gonna read big chunks of it, so uh, follow along. It may even turn in your Bible to it if you want to. But the psalmist says, truly, God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled, my steps had nearly slipped, for I was envious of the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For they have no pangs until death, their bodies are fat and sleek. We're not real big on fat now, but they were. Uh, they are not in trouble as others are, they're not stricken like the rest of mankind. Therefore, pride is their necklace. Violence covers them as a garment. Their eyes swell out through fatness. Their hearts overflow with follies. They scoff and speak with malice. Loftily, they threaten opposition. They set their mouths against the heavens and their tongue struts through the earth. Therefore, his people turn back to them and find no fault in them. And they say, how can God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the wicked, always at ease. They increase in riches. All in vain have I kept my heart clean and washed my hands in innocence. Wow, that sounds pretty bleak, doesn't it? He's celebrating how the wicked get away with it, how the, the unrighteous are prospering, and he's just like complaining about that. And, and let's be honest, when we see the world, when we watch the news, when we know people who cheat the system, we kind of get how the psalmist feels, don't we? It's like, it's not fair. Of course, the psalm isn't over in verse 13. If you look down at verse 16 and 17, the psalmist says, but when I thought how to understand this, it seemed to me a wearisome task. It was wearing him out thinking about it. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I discerned their end. Until he got alone with God and realized the reality of the situation of the people that he's looking at and being envious of. And what he says is, God help me see that the wicked are going to lose. That no one really gets away with it. It may look like they're getting away with it. It may look like they're prospering, but they're really losing. Justice will prevail. And by the way, because justice will prevail, I want mercy. I don't want justice for me, and I really don't want justice for you. I want mercy. So you heard the doubts. Now listen to the declaration of faith that this psalm concludes with. Picking up in verse 23, he says, even in, in the midst of all this, nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel and afterward you will receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire beside you. My flesh and my heart will fail. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For behold, those who are far from you shall perish. You put an end to everyone who is unfaithful to you. But for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the Lord God my refuge that I might tell of your works. He, he, says, look, he says, look, God is with me and I am with God. God guides me. God is my desire. God will receive me into heaven. God is my strength. And he ends with this. I will tell of all his good works. You see, when you really understand the goodness of God, when you understand the, the plan of eternity, when you understand that we don't get what we deserve, but we get so much better, and best of all, we get the love and relationship with Jesus Christ, then we're also the ones who hopefully feel compelled to tell of God's goodness, to tell of his works in our life and in the life of the, uh, in this world. So uh, I hope today that no matter what you see, well, first of all, don't watch so much news, but no matter what you're uh, feeling, that you'll praise God, you'll realize these truths that the psalmist uh, spoke, and then you'll go, go out and you'll tell people about the goodness of God. Hope that blesses you. Have a great day, Calvary.